Uh, guys, our next guest, she is lovely, but she is also a little bit of a wicked witch. Alright guys, I need a round of applause for Rebecca Meter! Hello! Welcome to my living room. Please, hello? Is this thing on? Changing settings, I'm sorry. I know my mark is here, but you're gonna forgive me. You're gonna forgive me. Uh, I hope you like my uh, new furniture in my living room. It looks really expensive. It looks, but it's like you. Yeah. It's quite good. Art. A back support, I'll take it. Yeah, it's really nice. nice. And I hope you don't mind my guests in my living room. Hi, guys. Hi, oh girl. <laughs> How is everyone? I'm freezing. <laughs> I have got a blankie, some hot water, I'm like, D -d 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 -d. I almost wore a dress today, thank god I didn't. That would be, because it is chilly on the willy. <laughs> it's chilly on the willies, that's for sure. But maybe socks will help. Yeah, I know, but socks with these shoes, not so much. Wait, well, you can always start a new trend. <laughs> it could go viral, you never know. Socks, yeah, well, maybe I'll do it tomorrow. Stay High heels with socks. That sounds, that, that, could, that could go, you never know. Uh, so nice to have you here. Good to be here. Uh, such a pleasure and uh, you have such a nice fan base as well. Are you guys excited? <laughs> Once is the best. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, of course we're here to celebrate you and your art. And, uh, but also I can see that our audience is very, very keen to ask you a lot of questions. So I'm happy to see that. Um, but. Uh, before we jump uh, into that, I was uh, reading your bio and I was very curious, how did you make a jump from UK to US? How did it happen? I could not get an agent, an acting agent in London, because I didn't go to university. So if you haven't got a degree in drama or the performing arts, it's impossible to even be seen by an agent. It's very picky. Well, it's very British. It's very British. <laughs> Did you not go to school, dear? Ta ta. You're know, like, but what? Oh, shit. Hmm. So I was like, well, sod it then, I'm just going to go to America. So I bought myself a plane ticket to New York, and I was like, I'm going to go and become an actress in America. And everyone in Cambridge, England said, see you in a couple of weeks, which made me just want to really prove everybody wrong. So that was always, you know, whenever things were bad and I hadn't got any money or was really hungry because I couldn't afford food. I thought, I can't go home because then everybody that had said, good luck, <laughs> would be like, haha, I told you so. So that was always sort of my motivation to not give up and keep going. Out of spite. Yeah! <laughs> That's the best kind of motivation. Yeah. Well, we were very, very happy that you were so stubborn <laughs> and that you had so many people that didn't believe in you because you. that uh, brought you to us. So yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so thank you for answering my question as well, but I can see that there are some people that want to add, uh, ask yes. you something as well, so let's go to them. Hi guys! Uh, hi, uh, a question about once for time. Uh, did you know that in season 4 you would be coming back? No. No, not at all. When I died at the end of season 3 and went into this sort of green swirling abyss, I thought that was the end, because it was supposed to be. The Wicked Witch was only supposed to be ever be in eight episodes. It was never supposed to continue on after that. And um, I was actually leaving an audition for a show, I can't remember what it was, something for HBO. I was leaving an audition when I got the phone call from Adam and Eddie asking me if I would come back from the dead. So I was like, oh my God, it just was really out of the blue and completely and utterly unexpected. And I was like, well, how are you gonna bring me back from the dead? And they were like, well, you were made Marian all along, and you're pregnant. I'm like, oh no, that's terrible, I love it. <laughs> so I knew I was gonna get a lot of hate for that, but I thought it'd be fun. So yeah, no, I know idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. Thank you, darling. And it was a little bit of a wild with your career in Once Upon a Time, and that's you. you. You were not supposed to be there, then you showed up in a completely different way. Um, I, was it an emotional roller coaster for you as well? 
Yeah, because you already said goodbye to the role. Yeah, and then you had to like kind of go back. They just kept trying to get rid of me. I'm like, good luck with that. <laughs> Maybe they tried to kill me ten times. I'm like, you can't get rid of me. I'm like, cursed. I'm like a fart. I just linger. You know, you just cannot get rid of Rebecca Lader. Sorry, nice try, guys. It's not happening. So. <laughs> well, thank you for that comparison. That's gonna stay with me for a while. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, next question, please. Nice costume. Thank you. Um, hi, Bex. Hi. My question for you is, if you had to cast a curse from once upon a time in real life, which one would you choose? Um... I wouldn't want to go back to Camelot, particularly. Now I can't remember all the curses. <laughs> which ones were there? Give me one to choose. Oh, you had sleeping curses, the dark no. curse, um, no. spell shed inside. <laughs> I'll do that one. The sleeping one, not so much. I didn't like the sleeping one. <laughs> I don't like to miss anything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next question, please. Hi, uh, my question is, who was your favorite co-star that you got to work with for once upon a time? Definitely my sister. Oh, I think everybody knows the answer to that. Um, most of my storyline, obviously, was with Lana and the Evil Queen, so that was what I enjoyed the most. And um, we liked acting together the most. Not just because we were friends in real life, but just it was the most fun. And it was nice to be part of a relationship on the show that just wasn't based around romance. It was a, a familial, family thing, which was more interesting to me, quite frankly. And, um, I mean, yeah, we had fun drinking tea and eating chocolate and all that good stuff, but we liked working together because, you know, one thing that Lana and I are very good at is listening, which means that when you're a really good listener and then the other person does something different, then the other actor responds differently as opposed to just doing what they've rehearsed, which then makes your job more interesting. Because when you're shooting a scene, you, you know, you're going to do it 20 to 30 times to get all the different angles. If you didn't get the same every time, that's really boring. So it was more fun to work with her because every single take between us would be different, which kind of kept it always really interesting. So I, she was my favorite. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It probably made it very uh, difficult for the editors to choose the best. Uh, well, I, that's what I asked. I said, are we making it more difficult? And the director said, no, you're making it better because we've got more to play with in, in, in the editing room. So I was worried that it might be annoying, but I said they liked it. That's perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much for the question. Next one, please. Hi. Uh, first of all, I want to say how much I love you as Selena. Thank you. But my question is, um, are you still in touch with any of your um, Once Upon a Time colleagues? Most of them, yeah. We're all still really good friends. I am um, obviously very close with Lana. I'm still really close with Emily, she just had her baby and visited LA. Sean McGuire and I are like best mates and he and I had a baby girl, well not out of his vagina, but Sean and I had daughters five days apart from each other, so we like to do play dates and have our babies play together. Um, I'm friends with Karen David, I'm still really good friends with Captain Hook. I mean, uh, Maleficent is a good mate of mine, Ursula, Cruella de Vil, I mean it's, it's insane. If you look at my WhatsApp on my phone, it's most of the cast of Once Upon a Time. It's weird. You don't normally leave a TV show with that many friends. That's not normal. So it's a real testament to the kind of people that were on the show, but we are still, five years later, still in like a family and really incredibly close. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. And why, why do you think that is? Why do you guys uh, form such strong bond? I don't know. I think it's just luck. I think it's just who they cast. I think they legitimately cast people that they thought would fit in. And that, that was the magic. Yeah. Because that also translates to the screen, because you guys yeah. had this special bond, and yeah. that's why the show is still, after five years, vivid in our uh, imagination, because we could feel that bond. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just curious, where's the, ma where's the magic dust? Like, yeah. well, they just, they hired good people. Yeah. Kind people, you know? Yeah, it makes a big difference. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi Max. Hi yeah. So uh, my question is, how do you feel uh, knowing that you've made such a big impact on people's lives and that you've inspired them? Like, how? Um, what does that mean to you? Like, how, what do you think about that? 
I don't think about it, to be honest. I mean, most of the time I'm shouting at children and trying to find out who had a toy first. So typically, I mean, my life is insane. And then all of a sudden I remember that I'm an actress and that I have done something also, as you're saying, meaningful. So I have to remind myself sometimes of those things because those things do bring me a lot of joy to my heart to know a, that I love what I do selfishly for my own reasons, but that the work I have done or the things I have said at conventions or the connections, the genuine connections I've made with a lot of you have had a positive impact on other people's lives. And that's one of the reasons why I love social media so much is because it is a reminder of those things because it's why I love to do what I do because it's, it's, it's impossible to explain how much meaning that has to me. It's everything, you know? Thank you. Thank you, and you've really made a big impact on my life, actually. You have, uh, ever since I met you the first time when I was 12, I, you've always been able to make me smile, so. Aww, thank you, I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Isn't that amazing? And the platform that you have, as you say, social media to connect with your uh, fan base is great, but I think meeting everybody in person at conventions, this is, you're, like, you cannot replace this feeling with anything else. No, that, I mean, conventions is like stepping into Twitter or Instagram, isn't it? It's like you're making those communities come to life. And I've watched so many of my fans build their own relationships and people that live all over the world come together at these conventions and have become lifelong friends forever because of this show. It's just so cool. Uh, we had guests on the, from The Walking Dead before the panel and the girls said exactly the same. That they're observing their fans, connecting, forming relations with families that watch the show together and that very bonding because that particular show has the values that they believe in. Yeah. And it's the same way here. Which yeah. is really beautiful, isn't yeah. it? So Humans cool. are amazing. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, please. Hi, Rebecca. Um, I'm very happy to meet you. Um, really, Once Upon a Time is literally one of my favorite shows. I'm also at season seven, Regina. Um, but um, my question for you is, um, um, how, uh, what, what's your favorite scene as Selena on Once Upon a Time? I don't have one. I mean, there are just a bunch that, you know, tickle me. I loved working with my mum, with Barbara Hershey and Lana. I loved all that storyline we had when the sisters realised that they'd known each other forever. And just the three of us, like, working with just three women doing fun, emotional work together was so special. And, like, in between takes or before we were about to roll, we would just be, like, holding hands and, telling each other how much we loved each other. It was just so moving and special. But then on the flip side, selfishly, I loved all the stuff where I got to be green and terrorizing and doing really awful shit. That was really fun. You know, like smacking the munchkin in the head. And then another thing I adored was doing the, uh, and I know I've said this a thousand times, but doing the musical episode, because that I felt like a rock star shooting an MTV music video. And that was an experience I'll never forget. And flying my broomstick, obviously, was a real high, literally, big one to me. Thank you. Okay. What was your favorite scene? Huh? What was your favorite scene? Um, my favorite scene is really when Selena and Regina first met in season three. Yeah, that was a good one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. Hi. Um, my question was, how did you get into acting? <sighs> Not a normal way, it's because as I said earlier, I couldn't find, I couldn't get a meeting with an agent in the UK. It's impossible if you haven't gone to drama school or university. So I couldn't do it in England, so I had to go to America. And then I got into America legally with a type of visa that you can get when you're a model, which I hated modeling. I hated it, but, you know, visa, you know, so I used, I used the modeling visa to get into the, the States knowing I was using it as a way to try and get an acting agent. 
And then it's much easier to get an acting agent in the States. They don't care if you've ever been to school, if you can even read. I mean, America, you know, they, I mean, I know as Brits we like to take the piss out of the States, but one thing I do like about America is that they are more willing to give you a chance. If you're up for a challenge, they're like, well, let's see what you've got. It's not like, oh, what class are you from? And what have you studied? And I love that about the States. And <clears throat> the, my acting agent, who I'm still with to this day, 24 years, my God, I've been doing this. They opened um, an acting department within my modeling agency. And I was like, hi. <laughs> and I started booking right away and I had to get a different visa and all of that stuff. And I was the only one that did, so they closed down the department and then just took me over to the main agency. And then I quit modeling when I got my first like big TV show. So it's kind of like a cheating way to get in, but I had to figure it out for myself because I didn't know how else to do it. Because it can be really hard to get into the business, you know? The first thing you have to do is get an agent or a manager. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that sounds really tricky, you know, when you're trying to get into the business. I think nowadays it's even more difficult because you have more access to it in a way, because you can send your recording videos, there's internet, and there's more opportunities with that, because I feel that there's more shows produced as well. And, but you also have, like, everybody wants to be famous now, and everybody wants to have their five minutes. Uh, if it's on TikTok or it's, it's in YouTube, at least that's my feeling. Would you, would you agree with that? Or? Yeah, but I think at least now, because of the way that now everybody can be a videographer and everybody can post their stuff online, at least if you do have some talent, you can create your own content. True. Whereas back then you couldn't, and if the people did give you the opportunity, there was no way of ever showing it. And like I remember back in the day when Justin Bieber became famous, it was only because of YouTube. And if YouTube hadn't been invented, then there wouldn't be a Justin Bieber. So at least we have the platforms to showcase our talents if you live in the middle of nowhere and can't get an agent, at least there's a way to show it and you never know what eyes might see it. Because before there was no other way, you just had to perform in your bedroom for the rest of your life. You're very lucky at the right spot in the right place. Yeah, which is impossible. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, it, everything's possible, but it is much harder. Much more difficult. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, next question, please. Hi, um, my name is Mamiyama. And I was wondering if you could, uh, if you got to take home a souvenir from the set. Yeah, I stole a bunch of stuff. <laughs> um, I stole quite a few bits and bobs. I did ask, sort of stole my broomstick. I say ask. Did I? I don't. <laughs> it's actually by my bed, my broomstick. I see my broomstick every morning. Awesome. And then my son tries to steal it after bath time. He goes, Mommy, what is this? What is this in here? Why is it not in the garage? Like, why is there a broom in the bedroom? He doesn't understand. And I go, oh, I just like to keep it there because it gives Mummy good luck. And he's like, you're a weirdo. Because I haven't told my kids what I do at all. They don't understand. Because I don't, I don't want to show them what I look like as the Wicked Witch because it's going to give them nightmares. <laughs> it's definitely, I mean, they're a bit too young, but in a couple of years, I think I'll tell them that Mummy used to be a witch. That would be awesome. That's another um, kind of uh, motivation, no? Totally. And my daughter's only two, and she wanted to be a witch. Halloween, and I was like, oh, I wish you knew. Oh. Only you knew. I'm like, that's too soon. She'll have nightmares. Bless her. So cute. That's so nice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Um, so, I wanted to ask you um, if you could change anything about Once Upon a Time, what would you change and why? I would have done a spin-off with the sisters. I think there should have been a spin-off with me and Lana. That's what I would have changed. Where do we sign the petition? Yeah. I'll put it online. That's outside it. That's a good idea. Yeah. I would watch that. Good idea. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I just want to say, it's so cool that you're coming to this Comic Con. Um, I really love Once Upon a Time, which, uh, when I was younger, I always watched it with the family, so it's really cool to see you. Oh, thank I hope you. you have a great time here. I am, thank you very much. Hi. Hi, darling. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh-oh. <laughs> Hi. Hi, yeah. I have a question about the Once Upon a Time reunion. Mm -hmm. What? Well, oh. I've seen rumors about Once Upon a Time reunion. 
like the show. So I don't know if it's a very simple question, but we just wanted to know if you'd ever do like an actual reunion. Yeah. I mean, we have them socially all the time, so why not video it? Like, <laughs> when we're all together, I'm like, is this not a show? Why aren't we rolling? Well, we are. Is it going to happen? Yeah, is it gonna I, I legitimately don't know, but I think, I think we should, yeah. And if it happened, yes, I would do it in a heartbeat, for sure. I'll see what I can do. Yeah, I'm on it. Try hard. Oh, I will. Oh, I don't sound better. I will. I've got some homework. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you have some uh, work uh, cut out for you, no? Some petitions and that. I'm rest for the wicked. No. We're resting. No, I just see like an AK-47 going that way. I'm like, I don't do it. It is an AK-47, but it's plastic. Thank oh, God. <laughs> we do have sites that you have to go, you have to get your weapons checked. Okay. If you're not. Real, don't worry. Thank God. And also, we're not in the United States, so it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a that was a low one. That was a low one. <laughs> uh, well, it's lovely to have you here, but unfortunately, I need to let you go because our time is finished. Unfortunately, you have to go back to your fans and uh, sign some autographs, and I think you have some more photo shoots to do. Um, I think so. That was on my schedule. So it's really nice having you here. And Thank you for having me. Uh, lovely to talk to you. Me and too. Looking forward to that spin-off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got some homework to do. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. A round of applause for the Wicked Watch. Thank you very much, guys. And the next panel will be the 100.